All right, so um, what we are going to do uh, in this lecture and the next is you know try to look at uh, uh, the Zariski topology, but not in terms of closed sets, but in terms of open sets. See if you if you recall uh, that any topology on a topological space is specified by either giving a collection of subsets which uh, called close I mean called closed sets which satisfy the axioms for closed sets for a topology or equality it is given by a collection of subsets called open sets which satisfy the axioms for open sets uh, required of a topology and you know the axioms for closed sets and the axioms of open for open sets are just uh, got they are equivalent to one another by using uh, the pro the uh, properties of uh, complement taking the complement of a set uh, in a larger set uh, so de morgan's laws for example so uh, usually uh, uh, when we do uh, classical uh, uh, analysis uh, or topology for example if you study euclidean space uh, n dimensional uh, real space then the topology uh, is given only by using open sets and the open sets are given by uh, thought to be uh, given by unions of you know open disks or open balls okay uh, which turn out to be open intervals if you are in one dimension uh, of course, if it is two dimension then these are open disks and so on, but so the approach is by specifying open sets, but in the Zariski topology our approach has been uh, by specifying closed sets okay called the algebraic sets and these closed sets uh, were uh, given by uh, the set of uh, the sets of common zeros of a bunch of polynomials in the right number of variables okay. The number of variables should be equal to the number of uh, uh, copies of the field that you are taking okay. Now uh, what I want to do is to uh, now shift the focus and get into uh, study of open sets okay in the Zariski topology. So, uh, so what so what we have is uh, so, so the uh, so open sets in the Zariski topology. So this is what uh, we want to get an idea about okay. So uh, so you know K of course is an algebraically closed field and uh, if you want as usual you can think of uh, K to be the set of complex numbers field of complex numbers which is algebraically closed and then you are looking at A n uh, K this is uh, just k n with the Zariski topology and of course the Zariski topology comes by looking at the polynomial ring in n variables and looking at uh, by, uh, by and looking at common 0 loci of a bunch of polynomials uh, and calling that common 0 locus that particular subset of uh, a n uh, as a closed subset and then taking all possible 
subsets like that to be closed sets and that is how you get the Zarsky topology ok. Now uh, of course uh, uh, we, have, we have defined what uh, a variety is a closed sub variety of affine space ok is supposed to be by definition a closed subset which is irreducible right we have done that. So now let I, I start with uh, uh, an open set here and see how it looks like. So let u inside a n be an open set ok. So by uh, of course uh, assume that uh, u is non empty ok um, and also if you that u is not the the full space which are both open of course ok because uh, the null set is closed the full space which is its complement is open and since the full space is closed the null set which is its complement is open. So these two are both open sets they are the they are the trivial open sets ok uh, but you are looking at a non trivial open set a proper non uh, non empty proper open subset ok. And of course what you must understand is you must remember that uh, any such open set u is uh, is very special in the sense that topologically it is dense ok and uh, uh, it is also irreducible as a topological space. So that is because we have uh, uh, I have told you that uh, uh, the irreducibility of a topological space forces that every non empty open subset of that topological space continues to be irreducible and also uh, is dense ok and since a n itself is irreducible ok because it corresponds to the uh, 0 ideal ok which is prime and the 0 uh, the 0 ideal in the polynomial ring is prime because the polynomial ring is an integral domain ok. So uh, a n corresponds to the whole affine space corresponds to the uh, prime ideal namely the 0 ideal therefore it is irreducible we proved that uh, a closed subset and uh, in uh, a n is uh, irreducible if and only if the ideal that it corresponds to ok namely the ideal of functions that vanish on that closed sub on that closed subset is actually a prime ideal ok. Uh, that is the translation of irreducibility which is a geometric property into uh, the ring theoretic property of primeness in the polynomial ring ok. So a n is a uh, is irreducible and therefore any non empty open set is both irreducible and dense ok. So uh, recall that u is irreducible and dense. So this is uh, this is something very special ok uh, does not happen for example in the usual topology ok. For example if you take the topology of the real line uh, given by open sets given by open intervals and uh, or if you take the topology of the plane R2 2 copies of R uh, the real plane and give the topology to be given by open sets uh, uh, which are unions of open disks then you can see that uh, a non empty open set need not be uh, it need not be irreducible it need not be dense ok. But this is very special for the Zariski topology. Uh, now uh, now the complement of u which is a n minus u is a closed set that is by definition and uh, and what is a closed set for the Zariski topology it is of the form z of i where uh, i is an ideal in the polynomial ring and mind you this this ideal cannot be the unit ideal ok because uh, if this is the unit ideal uh, then the 0 set of that will be the null set and then the complement of u will be the null set and that will mean that u is the full space which is not the case and mind you this ideal cannot be the 0 ideal also because if it is a 0 ideal then the 0 set of the 0 ideal is the full space and that means that the, the complement of u in the full space is the full space and that will force the set u open set u to be the null, the null set. So our assumptions tell you that i is a is a proper ideal which is not 0 ok 
I, uh, I should say I is a proper ideal uh, uh, not equal to 0. Now, um, now you see. Uh, now let's go back uh, and look at it carefully. Uh, I mean, let's go back and recall uh, the fact that this ideal has to be finitely generated. You see, we have Hilbert's basis theorem, which says that if R is a commutative ring with one which is Noetherian, then any polynomial ring in finitely many variables over R is also Noetherian. Okay, which means that, uh, and the Noetherian property, if one one of the definitions. Of the Noetherian property is that every ideal is finitely generated. Therefore, uh, k a field k is always Noetherian, field is always Noetherian because it contains only two ideals, namely the the full field as the unit ideal and the zero ideal. Therefore, a field is always Noetherian, and therefore a polynomial ring in finitely many variables over a field is also a Noetherian ring. Okay, that is this is because of Hilbert's basis theorem or Emmy Noether's theorem, and therefore this ideal i is finitely generated. Okay, so uh, uh, so let uh, I be generated by uh, f1 etc up to fm okay so let I be have finitely many generators f1 through fm okay then uh, then what is then what is z of i then z of i is going to be just z of f1 through fm and that is uh, that is which is actually equal to you know intersection i equal to 1 to m z of f i okay. So uh, the z of i is the set of points in the affine space which are common zeros for each of the uh, polynomials f i okay i running through 1 to m and uh, the common zero locus is just gotten by taking the zero locus of each of these sets and intersecting okay. Now what does this tell you about u? So what will u be? u will be the complement of z i. So it will be the complement of this. And by De Morgan's laws, this is the union i equal to one to m of a and k minus z of f i. Okay. So you get this. Uh, you get this uh, this expression which expresses any non empty non trivial open sets set as a union of open sets of this type but the open sets of this types are, sp are special in fact they are the building blocks for the Zariski topology for the open sets mind you z of fi is a hypersurface okay it's essentially a hypersurface uh, uh, because it's it is defined by a single equation it is defined by a single equation uh, of course uh, I for example you we assume that uh, if you assume that say fi is uh, actually irreducible okay then z of fi uh, is a hypersurface okay it is defined by a single equation and what this is this is the complement of a hypersurface okay this is the complement of a hypersurface what is this locus this is the locus where the particular function fi does not vanish it is the not is it is the complement of the locus where fi vanishes z of fi is a locus of points where fi vanishes and this is the complement uh, of that locus okay and so it is a complement if, if for example the fi's are irreducible then this is actually a complement uh, of a hypersurface the hypersurface defined by fi and these sets are very special they are called ba they are they will turn out to be the basic open sets okay so a set a set of the form uh, a n minus z of g is called a basic open set open set uh, and is denoted by d of g so this is the notation d of g d of g is the locus where g does not vanish it is a complement of z of g which is the locus where g vanishes okay and this is this is uh, such a such sets dg are called basic open sets now uh, the the what we have just seen above is 
tells you that any open set any non trivial open set is a finite union of basic open sets okay so so any open set is a finite union of such basic open sets okay now you see there is a uh, that is if 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 you have gone through a first course in topology there is uh, there is a statement uh, th th I mean there is a uh, notion called uh, uh, be uh, what is meant by a basic op a collection of basic open sets a collection of subsets of a topological space are is called a collection of basic open sets if this is a collection of open sets such that any other open set can be written as union of open sets in this collection. So uh, the condition for uh, uh, a collection of subsets to be basic open sets is that if there should be a collection of open sets and any open set should be written as u union of such basic open sets and you can see that in that sense also any open set is writable as a union in fact it is a finite union we get more any open set is in fact not just a union of basic open sets but it is a finite union of basic open sets okay and uh, the other beautiful thing is if you take uh, the uh, you know uh, if you take the intersection of uh, basic open sets okay that will also continue to be uh, if you take finitely many basic open sets and take their inter intersection that will continue to be a basic open set okay. So note also that d of uh, g1 intersection d of g m or if you want let me not use the same m I can it can be something else g r is actually d of g1 product g r <coughs> okay this is quite clear because you see the uh, uh, d of uh, taking the intersection of all the d of g i s is trying to look at those points where none of the g i s vanish and none of the g i s vanish at a point if and only if the product uh, does not vanish at that point okay. So you see these basic open sets have the property that you take finitely many of them and intersect them the resultant the, the resulting subset is again a basic open subset of the same type okay they are closed under finite intersections and their finite unions give you all possible open sets okay. So this justifies the terminology basic open set from the topological point of view okay. So, so uh, what all this tells you is that you the open sets for the Zariski topology uh, are built up by simply taking finite unions of basic open sets where basic open sets are of this form the uh, basic open set is just given by the locus of non vanishing of a single polynomial okay fine now now that is not the uh, that is that is not the that is just the beginning of the story in fact uh, uh, the the whole uh, philosophy uh, in the most sophisticated form of algebraic geometry is that not only do these basic open sets uh, define the most sophisticated possible uh, uh, object called a scheme in algebraic geometry okay but the fact is even the functions are built by looking at the functions on such small pieces so you see the uh, by now I think uh, you should you should have noticed that uh, our focus has started shifting to looking into rings of functions okay. See last the last lectures what we did was we assigned to every affine variety its coordinate ring the affine coordinate ring of functions which is simply the uh, polynomial ring which is a ring of functions on the affine space in which the closed sub variety sits divided by the prime ideal given by the ideal of vanishing of that close of that irreducible closed subset okay. So this is what we called as the affine coordinate ring of a uh, of an affine variety okay and I told you that uh, some uh, in a I gave you an indication in the last uh, couple of lectures that the uh, the proper the I mean the the, the Association of a variety to its affine coordinate ring is a 
equivalence of categories it can also be thought of as a bijection ok. So, the set of isomorphism classes of varieties is bijective to the set of isomorphism classes of affine coordinate rings ok and the affine coordinate rings are of course given by uh, uh, abstractly they are defined as finitely generated k algebras which are integral domains ok. So, uh, the moral of the story is I told you that you know the whole affine variety is completely controlled by its ring of functions which is uh, in line with the statement of Felix Klein that the geometry of the space is controlled by the functions on the space. So, uh, the whole uh, point about algebraic geometry uh, in going from the geometric side to the commutative algebra side is to completely uh, uh, is to is to associate to the space its ring of functions ok. So, the fact is that not only does not only do these basic open sets uh, form the building blocks of any open sets, but also that the very functions on your space they also come uh, by gluing together or putting together ok just like the you uh, you put these sets together to get an open set the fact is to get a function on that open set you will have to put together functions on the sets like this which uh, which you put together to get that open set ok. So, the fact is this these are not just basic open sets from the top in the topological sense they are basic open sets even in the function theoretic sense even their their functions on these will dictate the functions on the union ok. So, the the whole uh, uh, so, what I am trying to tell you is that I am just trying to tell you that it is very important to look at if you want to study functions on open sets ok then you should study functions on basic open sets ok that is what I am trying to tell you. And why do you look at functions on open sets because uh, you will have to look at functions if you want to go to the commutative algebra side in all this time we were looking at functions on irreducible closed subsets which are sub varieties and the functions where the ring of functions where the corresponding affine coordinate rings which are finitely generated k algebras which were integral do were domains ok. Now, if you try to do that to open sets the first step you have to start with is try to understand what are the functions on uh, a set like this a basic open set like this ok. So, to that uh, so to to get into that um, let me uh, so let us make let me make a definition definition uh, so mm. ok so definition uh the the ring of functions on d g uh is namely denoted a of d g is defined to be uh, the polynomial ring which is the ring of functions on the on the ambient affine space on which in which you are considering d of g uh, localized at g ok. So, look at this definition ok the definition says that the coordinate ring the affine coordinate ring the coordinate ring of functions is this polynomial ring localized at g ok. And if you remember uh, if you go back and uh, uh, go back to commutative algebra what this means is this is uh, as a set this is this consists of equivalence classes of the form f by g where f is a polynomial in those many variables uh, and uh, and maybe I will have a power of g uh, and m is <coughs> well greater than or equal to 0. And of course, <coughs> this equivalence class is uh, the, the I put a square bracket the square bracket uh, denotes equivalence class and you know uh, f by g power m uh, the equivalence class is equal to uh, uh, let me say h <coughs> by g power l if and only if there exists uh, t such that 
uh, g power t into g power l f minus g power m h is equal to 0 that is g power l f should be equal to g power m h okay. And of course uh, uh, so in all these things uh, I must remind you that uh, you when you localize at a single element in commutative algebra it means that you are taking the multiplicative subset to be uh, the set containing the powers of this element along with the element 1 okay. So and then it is also important to make sure that the element is not nilpotent okay uh, the multiplicative subset should not contain 0 and if the multiplicative subset is uh, going to contain powers of g and 1 and 1 is being thought of as 0th power of g if you want okay then no power of g should vanish and the fact is no power of g will vanish because uh, the ring here is uh, is an integral domain it has no 0 devices in particular it is reduced it has no nil potents. So the condition that g is not uh, nil potent is not necessary it is automatic okay. So uh, and uh, uh, well so uh, leave alone this uh, uh, probably uh, not so nice looking uh, bunch of equations basically what it says is the set of functions on this locus where g does not vanish is just given by uh, taking the usual polynomial functions and multiplying them with powers of g inverted okay. So this f by g power m can be thought of as f into 1 by g power m which is f into g power m inverted okay and that is a very uh, sensible definition because you see on this locus g does not vanish okay therefore reciprocal of g makes sense. So 1 by g on this locus if you evaluate 1 by g it is going to give you a non-zero uh, scalar. So 1 by g is certainly a valid function where g does not vanish I mean this is very uh, this is a very standard thing that we come across always if you whenever a function is non-zero then the reciprocal of the function is also a valid function with the same properties as the original function for example if a function is continuous then if wherever it is not 0 the reciprocal of that function makes sense and that is also continuous. Similarly if a function is holomorphic where the function is non 0 the reciprocal of that function also turns becomes holomorphic if a function is differentiable and uh, if you look at the points where it is non 0 okay of course you always assume the points where it is non zero is an open set which will, which will be true because uh, where the function the points where the function vanishes will always be a closed set because the functions will be continuous basically and uh, if you have a function with a certain property then at the locus open locus where the function does not vanish the reciprocal of the function will also have the same property. So you should expect that 1 by g should be good enough only thing is it is not a polynomial but it is a reciprocal of a polynomial and then you see you see the therefore the functions on uh, this uh, this basic open set are given by actually rational functions rational function is a quotient of two polynomials the point is that the denominator polynomial is always some power of g of course it, it, it may be a honest polynomial m can be 0 okay or it could have powers of g in the denominator okay now this is the definition now what we need to what we need to do is uh, I need to convince you that uh, I need to convince you about two things I need to convince you about the, the, the that this definition is correct in in by looking at it in another way and that involves trying to tell you that this d of g which is an open subset of a n okay is actually also an affine variety there is another avatar of this d of g which makes it an affine variety it in fact becomes a closed sub variety of a n plus 1 okay and uh, this fact is uh, you would have already encountered in commutative algebra when you uh, looked at properties of localization. So you know so the so the so the, uh, the uh, 
So, the uh, the fact is uh, a of d of g is itself an affine variety this is a geometric fact ok I will I will explain why that is correct ok and uh, this is a geometric fact the uh, corresponding uh, fact in commutative algebra is that uh, so let me write that uh, the the corresponding uh, fact in terms of commutative algebra is uh, k of x1 etc uh, xn localized at g is actually equal to or maybe uh, so let me write it here let me rub that out k x1 through xn localized at g localization is actually equal to k x1 through xn then add one more extra variable y modulo g y minus 1 this is the so the fact that the uh, uh, the fact that these basic affine these basic open sets are actually affine varieties ok affine varieties may means they must be closed subsets of affine space irreducible closed subsets of affine space what you must understand is uh, they are in the affine space in which you have started considering them they are not closed they are open mind you d of g is being considered in a n and in a n uh, d of g is an open set it is a it is a non trivial open set ok. So, it cannot it is not a it cannot be a closed set because you know it is irreducible. So, if it is closed then it has to be the whole space ok. So, uh, because it is uh, if it is closed it is also, also dense. So, it has to be equal to if it is closed it has to be equal to its closure and its closure has to be the whole space. So, it will have to be equal to the whole space. So, if you consider d of g in a n it is certainly a uh, pakka open set it is not a closed set. But the fact is that in a higher dimensional fine space namely a n plus 1 it sits as a closed subset ok. So, uh, and this is uh, this uh, this geometric fact and the corresponding commutative algebraic factor related as we will see and uh, uh, the fact is that in that bigger affine space this is the affine coordinate ring of that subset which is the co this which is given by the coordinate ring of the full space divided by the ideal the prime ideal that corresponds to that subset that closed subset. So, let me explain this. So, what you do is we so, so let let us try to understand this. So, here is a geometric statement here is the corresponding statement in algebraic terms and of course, when I write here may be I should say isomorphic ok. This is an isomorphism as k algebras if you want ok. So, I, I have written equal to but actually it is strictly speaking I should say they are isomorphic to each other ok. Uh, and of course, that isomorphism comes uh, 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 because of universal properties the, uh, the isomorphism in one direction the, the, the isomorphism consists of two homomorphisms which turn to be inver turn out to be inverses of each other the homomorphism from this side comes because of the universal property of localization the homomorphism from this side comes because of the universal property of, of the polynomial ring ok. So, that is how that isomorphism comes. So, uh, so let me do the following thing. So, what you do is so here is uh, so here is let me draw a diagram it is not a uh, it is not a very nice diagram but anyway let me draw it. So, here is my a n and in a n uh, 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 in the space a n which will have several uh, coordinates uh, I mean uh, several dimensions but I am drawing something like a three dimensional thing and then uh, g the locus of g will correspond to uh, hypersurface 
so this is z of g okay so i'm just drawing a diagram that will help you to think but it's not uh, accurately correct and it's the complement of z of g which is d of g it is everything outside the hypersurface okay now what you do is you take and you see here uh, my uh, uh, here the ring of functions is a of a n k which is uh, k of x 1 through x n and g is of course uh, is a non constant polynomial if you want you can take g to be reducible but it does not matter then uh, uh, then what you do is you look at a n plus 1 so here is uh, so in a n plus 1 there is one extra coordinate all right and well I am not going to really uh, draw a picture but I am going to uh, do the following thing I am going to look at the 0 set of g y minus 1 inside a n plus 1 okay. So what does that mean I am uh, that means that I am taking the affine coordinate ring of a n plus 1 to be just uh, k x1 through xn so I am taking the same n variables plus I am going to add a another variable y so this is now n plus 1 variables okay and the way I have written it uh, since I have put an extra uh, since I have put an extra variable this a n is actually sitting as an n dimensional plane inside this n plus 1 dimensional space which is so this a this a n is actually sitting inside this uh, a n plus 1 okay and uh, it is the locus given by y equal to 0 when I put y equal to 0 then I get uh, the uh, I cut down by one dimension okay and the corresponding sub variety that I get here is actually this a n that is what it means to take these variables to be x1 through xn okay and uh, if you look at the polynomial g y minus 1 g y minus 1 is an irreducible polynomial okay uh, this is something that you can check the polynomial g y minus 1 is irreducible all right and therefore the the ideal that it generates is a prime ideal all right the ideal that it generates is a prime ideal and therefore the zero set of that ideal is an irreducible closed sub variety all right so this is this certainly is an affine variety this certainly is an affine variety in this affine space of dimension one more okay and what is the what is the affine uh, coordinate ring of this affine variety what is the ring of functions on this affine variety it is by definition equal to the polynomial ring of the uh, uh, ambient variety go divided by the ideal of this variety the ideal of this closed subset which is the prime ideal g y minus 1 okay see g y minus 1 is an irreducible polynomial and an irreducible polynomial in a unique factorization domain uh, an irreducible element in a uni unique factorization domain always generates a prime ideal so this ideal is a prime ideal okay and now the more beautiful thing is that there is in fact you can define a map from here to here which is a bijective map okay the map is given as follows you give me a set of points lambda 1 through lambda n uh, in uh, you give me a set of points here in 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 this open set so what it means is that a set of points in an is in this open set if and only if g does not vanish at this point that means if you plug in lambda 1 through lambda n for x1 through xn in g you should get a non zero scalar okay and you know what you are going to send it to it is very simple you are simply going to send it to lambda 1 through lambda n and the last coordinate will be 1 by g of lambda 1 through lambda n send it to this point now this point is a point with n plus 1 coordinates the first n coordinates are just as these n coordinates okay and the last coordinate is such that this point satisfies the equation g y minus 1 equal to 0 because the last coordinate y is 1 by g uh, where g is applied to the first n coordinates okay. So you can check that this is a bijective map okay already uh, uh, 
you know uh, if you take two n tuples like this and they go to the same one there okay then they have to be the same here and every point there uh, corres uh, corresponds to a point here you can get the point here by simply uh, forgetting the last coordinate you restrict uh, to the first n coordinates. So what I am saying is that the map from a n plus 1 to a n is the projection projection onto the first n coordinates okay and uh, uh, if you project uh, uh, if you project this you will get dg okay you will get dg that is what is happening. Now uh, you can do a uh, little bit of calculation and show that this map is actually a homeomorphism okay you can you can you can try that out you can show that this map is a homeomorphism the fact is that this map is not just a homeomorphism it is actually an isomorphism of varieties okay but the but that is a fact that we will have to check later on because I have still not defined for you what is meant by a morphism of varieties okay because an isomorphism of varieties is an invertible morphism of varieties it is a morphism of varieties which has an inverse which is also a morphism of varieties okay but just uh, grant that for the moment the fact is that this is an isomorphism of varieties and uh, the, the philosophy is once you have an isomorphism of varieties that should give rise to an isomorphism of isomorphism of the corresponding affine coordinate rings okay so if you believe that you, it will tell you that the affine coordinate ring of this must be isomorphic to the affine coordinate ring of this but what is the affine coordinate ring of this the affine coordinate ring of this is this okay but what is this isomorphic to this is isomorphic to the localization of the polynomial ring in n variables at g this isomorphism comes from commutative algebra okay so if you believe that it is fair to take the ring of functions on this to be this which is what our definition was okay okay so what you must understand is that if you if you believe that these two are isomorphic as varieties okay evidence for which is that you can check as an exercise that this bijective map is actually an isomorphism uh, in the topological sense namely a homeomorphism mind you this dg is a subset of a n a n has a Zariski topology this is an open set so it has an induced topology okay and z of g y minus 1 is a closed subset here that also has an induced topology that is key topology and I am saying this bijective map is not just a bijective map it is a homeomorphism it is continuous in both directions okay and that tells you that these two uh, spaces are uh, homeomorphic but it does not stop there they are actually isomorphic as varieties and if they are isomorphic as varieties they are uh, the philosophy is that they are coordinate rings the rings of functions have to be isomorphic therefore you can the ring of functions on this has to be isomorphic to the ring of functions on this which by definition is this by our earlier definition but that is isomorphic to this because of commutative algebra and therefore it is correct uh, in that sense to take the ring of functions on dg to be this okay. So this is a kind of heuristic argument which involves uh, certain things that need that will be checked later okay so this is some justification as to why uh, you should define it like this of course the other justification is. Uh, where g does not vanish 1 by g and powers of 1 by g will also make sense as functions and therefore ge most general functions you can write should be of this form okay and uh, uh, I should also tell you that this 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 geometric picture is actually a translation of this uh, commutative algebraic isomorphs okay this is the coordinate ring of this this is the coordinate ring of that and the fact that these two rings are isomorphic isomorphic as k algebras is actually a reflection of the fact that these two fellows are isomorphic as varieties okay so it is it is commutative algebra this is the commutative algebra statement these two being isomorphic as varieties is the algebraic geometric statement and they are just you know uh, each one each is equivalent to the other provided you make the right definitions all right so that is to convince you uh, why this definition is correct okay um, okay so uh, so I will continue uh, trying to tell te telling uh, trying to tell you about the points that lie here okay uh, with respect to the null sense okay 
so that that will also give you an idea uh, that uh, this is that that will also give you uh, another justification as to why uh, this uh, is the uh, this should be defined as a ring of functions on dg okay so i'll do that in the next lecture